there. I tell people you have magical powers all the time. The power of the clam. <laughs> Go on. Well, this is interesting. Did you hear that? The real L word is a lesbified, trashy reality TV goldmine of insanity, depravity, and just nonstop girl on girl action that left my jaw on the floor the first time I watched it through back when the pandemic hit. Now I'm here to recap every episode so we can revisit this sapphic gold mine together and witness the destruction of, oh, I don't know, a couple dozen lesbian relationships, all while being filmed real world style. Okay, the pilot starts us off with the cast in these short, super produced confessional clips. And what are we asking them about right away? That's right, their first lesbian sexual experience. She flew into town and I walked in, I pulled off my top. It's like, uh, this was 2010. Nobody was pretending here this was anything other than just a giant cells. Like when this show hits, the producers are talking to the audience, us, and they're like, look, it's, it's lesbians. Here you go, you're welcome. Tracy is absolutely stunning. I, I remember being blown away by her the first time I watched. Literally blew me off my feet. Like just, I have no feet now. I'm standing on a couple of nubs. So I'm a nine and she's 11. She's got boobs. Now, when Whitney comes on to the screen, you immediately feel her big energy. Like it is just Palpable. She has got leading lady vibes. You can just tell from this first episode alone that, you know, they've seen a lot of footage of Whitney and they've decided very correctly, like, Whitney is going to be the star of The Real L Word. Whitney is very comfortable on camera, especially in this first episode. You can tell Sada, Romy, you know, Nikki and Jill, Tracy, like, everybody has a little bit of perceived nervousness. Whitney, pfft, that girl, like, she was born to be an influencer. This is like a little bit ahead of the like big wave of influencers, but like obviously this is still what Whitney does. Um, and so to me, Whitney is just like fascinating to see early on here because she's so she's already so good at this. She tells us the story about licking sour cream and fruity pebbles off a girl's nips her first time. I didn't have whipped cream, but I did have sour cream. And then I thought to make it sweet, I would put fruity pebbles on top of it. I'm just saying. I don't know that I buy it, but I appreciate the story either way. Mikey's hair really outstages Mikey in this opening confessional. Like, my, Mikey has been listening to some John Bon Jovi, okay? I'm talking early 90s, not quite old and country, not quite living on a prayer, John Bon Jovi hair. So the first thing we do in the show is we watch Whitney go pick up Sada and Taylor. They all meet up with some friends and there's this girl in a beanie who's like, I don't want to go to these parties where it's just like, it's like everywhere I look, fam, 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 fam. Uh, where are the girls in beanies? It's like I put all this effort into this beanie on my head. Beanie girl especially hates. I'm too big, they're butch. Oh, didn't mean to offend your butch code of conduct. Now, Sada's first confessional tells me. There was some sort of a beanie girl nose ring thing going on that was very in style around this time. Also, this, like, this is truly the beginning of what will be the Ross and Rachel couple of this show. I can't, I can't tell if I wanna shake her or make out with her or just her. Why are those the choices, Whitney? Just why? We go from young and wild Whitney and Sada to Nikki and Jill, and I have to say, I very briefly chatted with Nikki and Jill on Insta and they are like awesome, very cool, down to earth, nice, super cool people. But I am not gonna hold back my opinions on them in the show. Even though everyone really should know how cool and awesome they are. Everyone should also know they're wearing matching purple in their opening scene, so. <laughs> I remember the first time I watched this, I was so turned off when Nikki is like, I'm really the straightest gay person you're ever gonna meet. But now that I'm like super biased, I kind of find it endearing. So we've made a lot of progress in the queer community where we're like, 
acknowledging there's no set way to walk, talk, dress, or act, you know, as a gay person. But at the same time, I'm just gonna be honest, them planning their wedding is gonna get boring, like, real fast. Really, I'm just a softie on the inside. But I'll still f you up if you cross me. The next shot, the next shot. I've never met anybody that works as hard as I do. Mikey is so, unfortunately for me, relatable. Like, I, I am a Mikey. I think I'm a Whitney. I, I want to be a Whitney, but actually I'm a Mikey. Mikey is in fashion and she is trying really hard to get us to see her as a hardcore BA fashion boss, but she's coming off pretty cartoonish, if I'm being honest. I feel like I'm winning and everybody else loses. Oh, what a loser. Next. We get to watch Tracy longboarding down a Californian boardwalk in a bikini top and a Britney Spears bandana. The producers are like, mm, hey Tracy, won't you hop in a bikini top and get on one of them longboards and uh, go ahead and skateboard down the sidewalk in your bathing suit top and uh, yeah. I think that's a good shot for the show. I love Tracy and Stamy. Spoiler alert. They're like still together and very happy. I'm very happy for them. I would have also loved to see like a little bit of single Tracy. It would have been fun. You know, like later later in this episode, we're gonna get to see Whitney hit on her. And I like, it's a very like fascinating scene. Ah, I just would love to see some other people hit on her and see her date around a little. Rose comes bursting into the show like lesbian Kool-Aid man. This is how you roll <laughs> Let's us know, hey, I'm a one percenter. Money, money is very good. There's a top one percent in the lesbian scene. She, just to clarify, she's a lesbian one percenter. Part of the beauty of me is that I'm very rich. And by the way, I do want to give a shout out to Rose in the present time. She is battling cancer right now, and she has been very open about this battle on her Insta. And I am just sending Rose all the love and so much support and I just feel for her and her partner as they are in this like very trying time right now. At FUBAR with Whitney, Sada, and Taylor, we get our first glimpse of the infamous Whitney, Sada, Romy love triangle. And this love triangle is going to be a big chunk of the storylines for season one. I waited for you for seven years. Bam! Rose comes home from the bars after her just treasure of a friend sent her off with. Have her change your diaper too. And to Rose, coming home drunk and waking her girlfriend up. I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping. Is the thing that reminded her how much she loves her. Please go away, let me sleep for the love of God! Now I know Nikki said she's the straightest gay you'll ever know or whatever, but tell me what she wants to wear at the wedding isn't hella gay. Dolce & Gabbana and Gucci white suits. Yeah. I think you'll look gorgeous, but I would love to see you try on a dress. That's against the rules, and you can't sit with us. You can't sit with us! Okay, also, look at their second set of scenes together. They have coordinated again! This time, they are wearing matching green. I'm very self-conscious. I don't wanna look like I have cleavage, like I have an ass. See? On my chest. My Tell me this isn't the definition of what she was describing. Like, look, there's an ass on my chest. I just, and I'm also wearing a white suit. Nikki just doesn't want to look like me on her wedding day. <laughs> I feel so insulted. Stamy is a no-nonsense, bejeweled butt jeans wearing mother of three. And she is also a reminder of how hard breakups are when you've had kids together. So Mikey's role on the show, Mikey will only be in the first season, and, and her role on the show is to provide some fun, fighty anger moments to, you know, show her and Raquel. But also, in season three, the show is going to dabble in the music industry. And in season one, through Mikey, we are dabbling in the fashion industry. And as someone who watched exactly two and a half seasons of Project Runway, I can tell you with certainty, this is boring. Like, this ain't it. Mikey thinks she's a bit of a Simon. I'll never f all my children. Models, out. Out. I don't want to see one f model in here. Whitney doesn't know what loose garlic looks like. Do you have, like, loose garlic already? Um, is this kind of 
Yeah, that's garlic. I guess when you got those sweet white lady dreads, you don't have to know what garlic is. We get this very interesting scene with Rose and her family where her pops and her uncle are encouraging her to settle down with Natalie and stop being such a wild child party girl. And while watching this scene, I'm like, um, shut up, Roberto. Like, shut the f up. We just got this show going. We, this is episode one of a trashy reality TV show. Come on, um, what, what are you doing to us here? We're filming a TV show. We can't have Rose settling down night one of the TV show. And then I'm like, oh, I see why Uncle Ray is so into Natalie. Uncle Ray gets a nice fist worth of Nat's hip when she walks in and uh, he ain't letting go. After family time with Rose, we get back with Mikey, who is like, listen, not only do I own many sunglasses that take up over 40% of my face, I also can sit on the corner of a counter. Really cool. There. I tell people you have magical powers all the time. The power of the clam. Well, this is interesting. Did you hear that? In this scene where Angie is talking about Whitney being a player and harnessing the power of the clam, Whitney is just loving it. According to Angie, I have power of the clam, whatever, and this is the clam. I guess I'm good with women or something. I don't know. That's like what people say about me, but like, is it even true? It's true. I'm really good with women. And then Alyssa, who is going to become a very steady and consistent background player over the next three seasons, totally reads Whitney up and down like a Picture book. You date girls that are looking for relationships. You don't date girls that are no. looking for a good time and like. What lesbian is looking for a good time? Tell me where she is. You. Hi. Can I get an amen up in here? Amen. Okay. Rewatching this back is amazing because I never realized it at the time, but like Alyssa totally calls it. I wouldn't call myself a player. Other people might. <laughs> Whitney totally knows she's a player. That's why she's smiling when she's like, other people might call me a player. I think that you say what people want to hear because you do like them and you don't want to hurt their feelings. And you also want to see where things will go. <laughs> Alyssa is just like, just like nailing Whitney left and right. Come on, let's go to bed. You can be Julia Michaels and I'll be Jackie Warner. <laughs> Mikey and Raquel. They role play as Jillian Michaels from Biggest Loser and her ex-partner, they are no longer together. If you quit on me again, you go home and no one's gonna chase you. We'll never work with their agency again. Rose and her crew, plus Whitney and her crew, plus Tracy are all going to meet up at Crown Bar. Let me have fun tonight. If you know where to go the nine and you, you remember that you have a girlfriend, you, you're not gonna have a problem. <laughs> If you have to remind your girl that she has a girlfriend every time before you go out, do you really have a girlfriend? I meet that girl. Right in front of Sada, Whitney is like, I wanna go meet that girl. And like, of course it's Tracy, who is wearing the exact same vest as Whitney. <laughs> God, we really do all dress alike sometimes. Now this, the next thing that happens might be my favorite thing that happens in all of season one. And it's an appearance by Veronica from The Challenge. Uh, really? Yeah, I know. Rose picks her up like a beautiful golden retriever and like Nat's not too thrilled with this. I don't think it's funny. I would be team Nat when you're in a relationship. You don't do stuff like that, but come on, Nat. It's Veronica from Road Rules. Give her a break. But then Rose gets in confessional and is like, Up until I met Natalie, you know, I was out about, you know, girl after girl after girl after girl, and I was a big cheater. Yeah. Um, this version of Rose was like kind of slimy. But I did love this moment. <laughs> Well, you couldn't physically pick up a girl, so I don't know 
well you're weak you're just like a strength like you can't even hold a can of green beans whitney continues to hit on tracy right in front of sada it's like she heard what Alyssa was telling her the night before and took it as like a prophecy that she had to fulfill i'm a little irritated with whitney i just feel like where are you we're here together we're hanging out you don't have to introduce me as your girlfriend but you know i feel like she's not paying attention to me okay we should go get her like, even though Whitney is sitting right there fulfilling Alyssa's prophecy, she totally plays dumb when Sada gets mad. She seems to be acting weird. I wanted to know what the f is going on. I feel like you and that girl are flirting. Maybe what you want girl? I feel like what girl? Are you serious? Whitney just goes full lesbian denial. Are you serious? Are you serious? Baby, we were talking about vests. Come on. I was asking her how she gets her vest clean. It was only like 20% about getting into her I mean, like, are you, do you have some sort of problem with vests? We get this very hot scene with Whitney and Sada propped against the car. And then Showtime is like, we are gonna make sure you don't miss episode two. You are not going anywhere. And they give us like a good minute or two of just adult lesbian content. And God damn, what a way to end the episode. Except there's more. We gotta watch Whitney take Sada to the airport the next morning. And I remember what's about to happen as I'm rewatching this. I remember like, oh my God, a new girl comes in right as Sada's leaving. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I forgot that. Come on. This is after she told Sada she should move there. I do wonder if like Sada and this other girl watch this back and like, do they feel as gross as I feel while watching this? Okay, well, that was the pilot. I hope you enjoyed it because I am going to be recapping every episode from season one and potentially every episode from the second and third season two. So let me know if you are enjoying it. Shout out to the patrons. Thank you so much for your support and being so awesome and uh, letting me do my thing during this like kind of chaotic uh, time period on my YouTube channel right after my move and a lot of stuff going on in my personal life. And so um, thank you patrons. Thank you everyone uh, sub to the channel for uh, all of your support and for just like watching me. And I will see you for episode two of The Real L Word. This show only gets crazier, y'all. If you haven't watched it, I would definitely encourage you like to go watch the show. Although if you are watching this recap, like what's the chances you haven't seen the show? Um, so maybe that was like a literal waste of screen time. All right, I'll see y'all for episode two.